All right, so in this um, section, we are going to talk about an alternative to the mixed effect model. Um, basically, we are talking about a marginal model. So the mixed effect that we have um, talked about in the earlier videos, we were talking about uh, some conditional model and the condition is on the random effects. Uh, we can talk about some marginal model and by marginal model I generally mean population level model and the basic idea in this uh, marginal model is that we are going to treat the data as if this is cross-sectional data there is no longitudinal aspect of the data but we will try to incorporate an assumed correlation structure all right so um, Generally speaking, when we are talking about repeated measurements um, in, in the context of the longitudinal data, we are basically talking about uh, outcomes that we have measured at different time points. So that means that we are essentially talking about a trend, but in the marginal model, what we are essentially going to do is we are going to talk, we are going to treat that entire series or trend as many cross-sectional data. Uh, this idea can be very similar to the survey data analysis that you do where you have um, observations from many different cycles uh, but we can kind of consider that those cycle uh, observations are independent right although it may be possible that there were were same subjects who were um, being surveyed in each of the cycles but because we do not know uh, the subject's ID in the survey data analysis, we were not really connecting them. So we were basically using the, those data sets as independent data sets and we were using the logistic regression um, to analyze those cross-sectional data sets. So we were basically considering the data sets uh, cross-sectional because we do not really know whether the same subjects were uh, surveyed twice or more or anything like that or even if they were surveyed we have no idea or no um, subject id um, that were available publicly to connect all of those subjects from the uh, different cycles um, so we used logistic regression model um, but in this particular scenario where we are trying to use the g model so in this scenario, the situation is a bit different where we basically know from which person each of these different data, data sets are coming, right? So uh, we exactly know uh, which outcome is coming from which subject. So if one subject was contributing to multiple outcomes, we actually know in this uh, present context. And in this context, we what we are going to do is even though we are going to get initial estimates from a GLM, we are going to use some sort of cor assumed correlation structure so that we can connect different um, cross sections or cross sectional data sets. Let me give you some example of what kind of correlation structure we can assume. So this is a identity correlation matrix. What this means is that each subject or each observations from the same subject were um, essentially independent. So there was no um, correlation between uh, the observation from one time period to another time period. So this uh, correlation structure where we are assuming that there was a fixed correlation uh, from uh, observation of one time period to another time period. So does not matter whether it is talking about the third month and eighth month, all of the correlations will be the same. And this is known as um, exchangeable correlation structure whereas this is known as the identity matrix or identity correlation structure this is somewhat interesting and so uh, often this is more realistic that if you are con comparing your outcome from uh, month two to month uh, say three then you will have a larger correlation but if you are comparing a um, observation from uh, month 2 to month 8 there may be less correlation so correlation coefficient is a uh, value between 0 and 1 and if you take a square of it the value will go down so that means what the further you are going um, the correlation between the observations are reducing 
So this type of correlation matrix is known as the autoregressive correlation structure. Sometimes we we do not really know um, what is the structure. Is it remaining constant? Is it going down or is it going up or something like that? In some situation, we do not know. So in that case, we will use a unstructured correlation matrix. Uh, so the assumption is that we do not know. We are uh, willing to uh, estimate all of these correlations from the data. But as you can understand that if you are using an uh, unstructured correlation matrix, then you have to estimate all of these correlations uh, individually. So that will uh, take up a huge amount of degrees of freedom from the data set. But in, in here, so for example, if you simply estimate one correlation, you can simply put it in the entire matrix. You can simply uh, estimate a row here you can simply have the row square row cube and all of that um, and that will require you to only estimate one correlation matrix but here you are going to estimate all of the different uh, correlation uh, coefficients uh, in each of these cells other than this uh, diagonal cell so this is going to be um, a scenario where you need to estimate a lot of different parameters right so even though this is more flexible, but this uh, comes with some problems as well. All right, so one of the examples of this marginal model that we are talking about can be generalized estimating equation, uh, or in short, they are known as GEE. And this GEE has a very similar interpretation to the uh, general regression and the coefficients at least the initial coefficients are estimated using the um, GLM or the logistic regression or the uh, Gaussian uh, linear regression. Um, and the estimate that we are getting out of these uh, regression coefficients, these estimates are at a population level. So these are not conditional levels. So we are getting an averaged out result. And since this is an averaged out result, we cannot really make inference about one particular person or one particular cluster because this is going to give us an overall average uh, at a population level. So in general, we, we have this general form of the regression that we are going to use for GE, but we have to specify which cluster we are going to use is it the subject that we are considering as a cluster is it the time that we are considering as a cluster we have to specify those and um, other than the outcome whether it is uh, following normal distribution or binomial distribution we ha also have to specify the correlation structure uh, so generally speaking the exchangeable correlation structure if you think this this is appropriate for your analysis you can try to use that and that will give you some sort of estimates and you can also use some other uh, correlation structure such as independence and then compare it with the assumption of exchangeability um, only thing you need to change is the correlation structure uh, in here you just put independence in here you just put exchangeable and that will give you two sets of estimate in terms of the point estimate you will see the point estimates are very similar but in terms of the robust standard error you might be seeing something slightly different so you can also get from r the printout of the working correlation and you will see this is the independence correlation and in here you can get the working um, correlation for the from the exchangeable where you can see this uh, 0.67 is going to be the uh, parameter that this uh, g will estimate and everything else is uh, basically copying that remember this was the exchangeable correlation matrix so all of the co correlation coefficients were exactly the same which is again the case in here other than the diagonal everything is same all right so how do i really compare the mixed effect model to the g estimates in the mixed effect model this is basically a conditional estimate and from G, we basically get the marginal estimate. So um, even though we might see the estimates are somewhat similar, but these are not really comparable in the sense that one is marginal and one is conditional. All right, so that's our lecture today.